Hello, fellow Java developers! Welcome back to our starter course on Apache Camel. In this video, we will take a look at Apache Camel's routing capabilities. In particular, we will go through examples of content-based routing and recipient lists. Let's begin! For this video, we will use new Camel project. I've already set it up. We have just camel core and login dependency, main class that creates and runs camel context, and one empty route. Also for this video we'll be using message broker, as it is much more convenient to show routing when we have multiple queues to route to. I've already set up my RTMSMQ in Docker. It is very easy to do. You just need to go to this documentation page. Link will be down below. Copy this Docker command and you're good. You have running RTMSMQ instance. Of course, for this, you need to have Docker on your machine. To make Camel work with GMS, we need to do two things. First, we need to add GMS component. And second one, we need to configure it. To add GMS component, we simply copy this Maven dependency and paste it to our POMXML. It tells us to use the same version as our Camel Core version. And for that, we have Maven project property. As you know, GMS is an interface, so we need an implementation. Let's use Apache Cupid as a GMS client and to add it, we need to specify org.apache.cupid as a group. Now artifact ID is cupid GMS client. And the latest version is 2.6.1. And with that, all that remains is to set up our GMS component so that it connects to our local RTMSMQ instance. First, we need to get our GMS component. As you know from previous videos, all camel related things live in camel context. And camel component is no exception. So let's get it. GMS component GMS equals camel context dot get component. Here we need to use get component method. We need to pass component name, which is GMS, and component class, which is GMS component. When we get it, we need to pass connection factory into it, and setup will be finished. So for that, we use method setConnectionFactory, and let's create separate private method for that. Let's call it create connection factory. In this method, we can just create connection factory from Cupid package with new, and we need to pass connection string into constructor, which is for RTMSMQ is IMQP colon slash slash, then local host, and I have my local RTMSMQ instance on a port 61616, which is a default port as we will see shortly. Yeah, and before we return our connection factory, we need to actually also specify username and password. We will see where can we get them. Yeah, we can actually get default values like port, username and password here on this documentation page. So let's copy them and paste to our connection factory. And that's it, we have our GMS component configured. Now we can use it in our routes. For example, we can type from and here we can use GMS queue name, for example, input.q. And the convenient thing about local RTMSMQ instance is that even if we don't have this queue, it will be created automatically first time we access it. For now, let's just lock our message on arrival. Let's lock its body with simple language and same with headers. Now let's run our route and send some messages to it. Here we have our queues 
we will have our queue when our route starts and our route have started we have our input queue let's send anything into it for example test message and we see in our route that we've received it as expected message is read from a queue and then logged now on to routing we will start with most common routing pattern which is content based routing imagine our message has some kind of content for example header and based on the value of that content we want to send our message to different destinations in our example we have this request type header and based on its value we want to send it in different queues if request type equals statement we want to send it to statement queues if request type is payment details we want to send it in queue for payment details and in the case that we can't identify our request type we will send it to queue for unrecognized messages to do such kind of content-based routing we use choice dsl element after declaring choice we can declare one or more when dsl element to specify our conditions this when method accepts predicate object which in turn has only one method to implement matches which accepts exchange and returns boolean value does this exchange matches our case let's create anonymous predicate implementation here and in this matches method we should put our logic that checks our header as we remember exchange is a container for message so to get message header what we do first we declare object request type this will be our header and it equals exchange get message get header request type so here first we extract our message from the exchange then we request our header from the message we check this header for null because it might be absent and if it's not null we can compare it with statement string return statement equals our header and IntelliJ immediately hints us that we can use lambda instead of anonymous class here so let's do this now we should specify what happens when this when branch is executed we should add any instructions what to do when this returns true so we want to send our message to statement queue as you can see here in two dsl element we've used same gms component we've used in from dsl element now let's write logic for another case we can just copy and paste this when element and change statement to payment request but we can do it even simpler we can use simple language to do the job for that we need to specify simple method and pass our simple language expression which will be header dot request type and we should compare it with payment details string if your predicate does not have complex logic then it is much more convenient to use these simple expressions so if you want to know all capabilities of this simple language link to its documentation will be down below and let's add this execution branch with two request dot details queue this is the queue where we want to send our message when it has a request type of payment details and finally we need to add a branch that will execute if our previous conditions are not met it is done with otherwise dsl element here in our otherwise branch we will just send to unrecognized requests queue
And after we did all that, we need to close our choice with and DSL element. And after we closed it, we can lock that we ended processing our message. As you might have noticed, this construction is very similar to classic if, else if, else constructions that many languages have. If this is true, we execute this branch. Else if this is true, we execute this branch. Else we execute this branch and this end DSL element is like end if. So let's try it out and run our route. While our route runs, let's go to our Artemis MQ web console and send some test messages. Let's start with request type equals statement. As we can see, it was routed to statement queue. Let's browse it and we can see that here is our message. Now let's send message with request type equals payment details. And we can see that it was routed to request details queue. Let's browse it. And here it is. And finally, let's not specify any headers and see what happens. As we can see, our message was sent to unrecognized queue. Let's browse it. And here it is. So our routing works as expected. So to sum things up, when you need to have different execution branches based on your message contents, you have this choice when, otherwise, and construction, which is like if, else if, else statements. And don't forget to close it with and DSL element. Also, put your routing logic in lambda or predicate object if it's complex and in simple language otherwise. Now on to recipient lists. Sometimes we want to route our message to multiple destinations based on its contents. In our case, destinations are departments and we want to route our message to multiple departments based on its header that has this destination list. For that, let's create separate route and call it recipient list example route. Let's remove all the things that we don't need for now and let's consume from recipient list queue. To specify our multiple destinations at runtime, we should use recipient list DSL element. There are many ways how to specify this list of endpoints, but the most simple way is to just provide a header. Let's call it, for example, where to send. Now we need to fill this header. And for that, we need to learn new DSL element process. As you can see, it accepts processor class that has just one method process that accepts exchange. So we can use it to edit exchange in any way we want. In our case, we will add this where to send header. Let's implement it. Here, let's first extract our department's header. We already know how to do that. Let's declare it object departments. Then let's extract message from our exchange. Then from message, we can get our header. Let's also declare contents of our where to send header right away. It will be list of strings or in other words, list of endpoint URIs that we will send our message to. It will have a name 
where to send and it will be just a new array list now if our department's header is present we can split it as it is separated with commas and with arrays as list method we can use for each and in that for each method we will for each department construct its endpoint uri and we will add it to our where to send value so to construct endpoint uri first we need to take our component name then we will add our department and then we will add dot q as this is how our queues are called and that's it our list of destinations is ready we just need to add it as a header to add header to a message we follow the same path first we extract message from exchange and then we can set our header with this value that is list of strings or list of our endpoint uris and that's it our routing logic is ready let's now add our route to the camel context and let's comment this choice example route because we don't need it anymore and after that let's run our route our application is running we can see recipient list input queue and let's send message let's add our department's header and let's give it a values of dep1 dep2 dep3 let's send it and now we see that our three departments appeared so probably there is a message in each of them so let's send another message now it should have only two departments department one and department three let's send it and let's check our queues our department one queue should have two messages and yes here they are our department two you should have only one message because second time when we send it in our recipient list queue we haven't specified department 2 and yes it has only one message and finally department 3 should have two message same as department 1 and yes here they are so to sum things up when you need to send your message to multiple destinations based on its contents you can add this process step to your route and here you can implement any logic you want fill some header or exchange property and then use it in recipient list the only thing that you should be aware of is that your recipient list should contain valid endpoint uris today we took a look at most commonly used camel routing patterns content based router with choice when otherwise and construction recipient list that allows to send message to multiple destination based on message contents but as you can see camel implements many more these are less used or more complex routing patterns so we will take a look at some of them in our future videos and with that here's the end of our apache camel routing video thanks for joining be sure to like subscribe and hit that bell icon and if you have any comments or questions leave them down below i will answer to all of those See you in the next video. Until then, happy coding!